Thank you. Order. Ten minute rule motion. Kerry McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to impose a duty on public bodies in relation to the welfare needs of animals as sentient beings. Mr Speaker, the reason I am here today bringing in this bill is because back in November 2017, I added my name to an amendment to the EU withdrawal bill tabled by my honourable friend, the member for Brighton Pavilion. New Clause 30 called for the EU protocol on animal sentience, as set out in the Lisbon Treaty, to be recognised in domestic law post-Brexit. As any MP will tell you, animal welfare issues are always popular with constituents, and this was no exception. There was a mass email campaign, vocal support from NGOs. It was very clear the public wanted the reassurance of putting this in that bill. The government, for reasons best known to itself, was less enthused and tried to argue that the concept of animals as sentient beings was already enshrined in English law. But the backlash was fierce, and there was a lot of press coverage suggesting that government MPs had voted that animals couldn't feel pain, which was slightly unfair. But, as I said, the, the, the public was clearly unhappy, and the government was forced to act by bringing in a three-clause draft bill, Animal Welfare Sentencing and, Sentient, and Recognition of Sentience Bill, in December 2017. This was the government promising to the House that it would legislate. Indeed, the Prime Minister um, also said this. And it was promising that it would do so before Brexit Day, which we thought at the time would be March 29, 2019. The consultation on the draft bill closed on January 31, 2018. The Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee, on which I sit, also carried out pre-legislative scrutiny and recommended splitting the bill so that the largely uncontroversial sentencing provision could be dealt with separately. I am not focusing on the sentencing provision today, but I genuinely do not understand why the Government has not been able to act in the intervening period to increase maximum jail sentences for animal cruelty from six months to five years. It would take a day of parliamentary time. It has public support. The government purports to support it too. So why not treat animal cruelty with the severity under law that it deserves? Yeah. Yeah. To return to technology, it wasn't until August 2018 that DEFRA got round to publishing the outcome of the consultation on the draft bill, having apparently been overwhelmed by the public response with over 9,000 direct submissions and another 64,000 from 38 Degrees members. DEFRA took on board the EFRA Select Committee's recommendation to split the bill, but since then we have had nothing, just warm words and a lukewarm promise to legislate. In October last year, the Secretary of State told Tory conference, animals are our fellow sentient beings. They show loyalty and devotion, and they know pleasure and pain. In February this year, at the Better Deal for Animals parliamentary reception, which brought together 36 of the UK's largest and most effective animal protection organisations, he said, Animals are sentient beings who feel pain and suffering, so it is absolutely right that we recognise this in UK law after we leave the EU. And just last week, the Animal Welfare Minister, who I'm glad to see is in his place, told the EFRA committee that the government was committed to legislating as soon as possible and was looking for a vehicle to bring it forward. Today, Mr Speaker, I am providing that vehicle for the government. Yeah, yeah, and if the Minister yeah. wants to take over from me in the driving seat, I'd be more than happy for him to do so. <laughs> Turning to the detail now of what I am proposing, the Bill recognises animal sentience and ensures that all vertebrates, cephalopods and decapods, including crustaceans, octopuses and squid, are legally defined as sentient beings. It also includes a mechanism for the list to be expanded in the future, based on the latest science. Aristotle actually once described the octopus as a stupid creature, and we now know that this is far from the case. Indeed, sometimes I think that it's far more intelligent than quite a lot of us. Um, to be clear, though, recognising sentience is about recognising that animals are capable of experiencing pain and suffering, that they have welfare needs, and that government policy should, to the greatest possible extent, and taking into account other policy needs, result in a good life for the animals concerned. My bill creates a framework for a mandatory process by which the government and public bodies will implement and report against the sentience duty. Specifically, it will establish an independent animal welfare advisory committee, provide a mechanism for informed assessment of animal welfare impact risk, taking into consideration the specific welfare needs of the species affected, weighed against other public policy needs, provide animal welfare guidance to government departments as well as a triage process to allow governments to prioritise resources for risk assessments on those policies with the potential to cause the greatest harm to the greatest number of animals, 
require full transparency from the government in real terms, in terms, in real time, in terms of assessments undertaken, policy options considered, reasons for the choice of the final policy option, and so on. Um, provide a mechanism for public consultation. There's more on reporting and reviews that I won't go into now. The creation of an Animal Welfare Advisory Committee is absolutely fundamental, as that would issue guidance on how the animal sentience principle should be interpreted and applied, and ensure that the duty is discharged. It's clear to me that no existing body could undertake this role effectively or adequately replace the current advice of EU institutions. To perform this function, the committee will need to have an open, transparent recruitment process, include independent members with appropriately wide-ranging specialist perspectives and expertise in both animal welfare and in ethical review, be able to co-opt additional expertise as required, um, be able to liaise and respect the views of stakeholders, be transparent in its advice, and include a mechanism to take representations, including concerns and complaints from the public. The reality is, if we don't legislate for this now, there is a risk that, and these are just a few examples, that imports of lower welfare animal products could be permitted under new trade deals, yeah. that developers may yeah. not have to consider the impact of new roads or housing yeah. or major infrastructure projects on wildlife in the area, that the UK could, through its overseas aid or trade programmes, invest in the kind of intensive farming systems that are not allowed in the UK due to animal welfare concerns, or that it would be more difficult to take action against inhumane wildlife management practices and wildlife crime. As the Minister knows, there is widespread support for enshrining sentience in UK law. Since February alone, almost 70,000 people have signed the parliamentary petition to recognise it in law, and 101 members from across this House have signed Early Day Motion 2070. And I want to thank organisations such as Wildlife and Countryside Link, World Animal Protection, the RSPCA, Humane Society International, Compassion in World Farming, and the splendidly named Crustacean Compassion for their support and assistance with this bill and their campaigning. <laughs> We pride ourselves in this country on our strong record on animal welfare, and we are right to do so, but we should never be complacent. Mm. There are many examples where we could and should do better. There are pressures on us, economic and global, which could lead us to backslide, mm. and we should always be vigilant and guard against this. I know there are some, a minority, who still question whether this bill is needed, mm. some who want greater licence to ignore animal welfare concerns whether it be so that they can cram animals into ever more intensive and industrialised farming systems or so that they can pursue so-called country sports. But the fact is, this government promised this legislation. Yeah. Indeed, this government staved off a major Commons defeat and what would no doubt have also been defeat in the Lords with this promise, and that was back in November 2017. It is now time for the government to keep its promise to this House, yeah. to keep its promise to the British people and to back my bill. Yeah. Yeah. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as I have that opinion say aye. 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 Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Darren Jones, Daniel Zeichner, Alex Cunningham, Henry Smith, Sir Roger Gale, Bob Blackman, Caroline Lucas, Ben Lake, Mr Alistair Carmichael, Dr Lisa Cameron and myself. Kerry McCarthy. Yeah. Animals Recognition of Sentence Bill. Second reading what day? 5th of April 2019. Thank you. 